Paper represents the idea of recording time, whether it be records, music scores, literature, or art. So this room covered in this age paper represents the passion of time constantly moving forward. That's what I was trying to say. So basically, with the paper being on the wall, I want to represent, like I said, time kind of moving forward, always constantly moving, even though in this space, it's a specific moment in time that I'm reflecting over. Um, what was the next part? Oh yeah, this whole... Um, installation is based on my grandfather who passed away back in October. Uh, when he passed away I was still in the early process of actually making this stuff and didn't really know exactly what I was going to do. Um, I was making huge sheets of paper for like some performance art stuff and it ended up turning yellow kind of on accident but I kind of turned that accident into a happy accident and I started pushing forward more into making it turn what, this, what it is now. The paper, when it, when it started turning yellow, reminded me of something that was old, something that was aged hundreds and hundreds of years. So I figured aging paper, combining the, the idea of it aging with record keeping, kind of goes with the idea of memory. And so I figured combining that with my grandpa passing away and me kind of automatically already reflecting on his passing, I felt like the two kind of coincided. So I started developing an idea from there. And eventually, after I did one mock-up, I decided that I wanted to do a paper room and continue that kind of series. Um, so yeah, that's basically the overall thing. Um, now I'm going to go to like the drawings. So I'm not sure if you can do that as we're going. Um, first thing I want to talk about is over here. Uh, I call it the influential ramps. Uh, basically, what this one's representing is a. Uh, Kind of me comparing and contrasting me and my grandfather. Uh, like for ever, since I've known him, he's always been a family oriented person. It depends why he's holding a child in, in the picture. And when I compare myself to him, I'm I'm also very family oriented. But for right now, while I'm in school and I'm in college trying to figure out who I am, I've been focusing on myself, which is why, I, if you know me, I usually do lots and lots of self portraits. I'm trying to come into my own, trying to figure out who really I am and where I want to go. Okay, over here is called is what I call him the Zona Lisa. Obviously, it's based off the Moon Lisa. Um, and this kind of represents basically what I've been doing this whole semester. Uh, I've been putting myself in art historical, um, art old art historical paintings and that sort of thing. And I put that, this one in there for two reasons, even though it's not my grandpa. 
The first reason is it's kind of who I want to be and where I want to go. I want to be in art conversations, I want to be in galleries, I want to talk to people and do that sort of thing. And the second reason is because it's kind of funny, and I think it's hilarious, and uh, I think the world's too sad for nowadays. And so if I can make, if I can brighten up somebody's day, I, I, I'd love to. So it's like my little side joke that I normally kind of do. I don't like to be serious very much. And lastly, in terms of on the walls, over there in that corner, uh, I call two chairs. Uh, conversation doesn't end after someone dies. I still mount physically talk to my grandpa, obviously, that would make me kind of weird. But things that he taught me and everything that he's ever done for me has influenced a lot of things in my life. A lot of beliefs that I believe in come from him. And so the empty chairs represent the idea that, yeah, he's no longer here, we're no longer physically conversating, but we're still having a conversation in some way, fashion, or form. Um, in the middle is my table that I got from Humble Abodes. And uh, each object on here represents some, like a specific memory that I have of my grandpa. Uh, the dice and the cards. Those represent what we always kind of do when we go to grandma and grandpa's house. We always play dice games, card games, any kind of board game you can think of. And, uh, Usually when we play, we're having a lot of team uh, card games, and I'd always want to play with my grandpa because, I don't know, the whole wisdom versus new blood sort of thing was like awesome. And uh, so I'd always end up being with him, and a lot of the time we actually wind up to our horns, just saying. But uh, the times when we would not be winning, because I know that they would disagree with me, uh, he'd always be tell he'd always be like, boy, we need to play us a bottle of ketchup. And I don't know if y'all caught that joke at, at first, and I didn't, because I mean, because he's saying we gotta catch up, catch up, catch up. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. <laughs> I like it. Good. So, and I consider kind of the granddaddy of all dad jokes, so it's kind of a great joke. Um, the next little set on there I, I want to talk about is the coffee cup and the coffee pot. Um, Smell plays a very important role in developing <coughs> memories. And so because of that, I want to put those in there because every morning when I woke up in Grandma and Grandpa's house, I always just smelled coffee. I mean, I don't remember a time where neither one of them had did not have a coffee cup near them. So uh, next one we'll talk about is the BB gun. And that one kind of represents their backyard. Uh, their backyard is like ridiculous. It's like beautiful. Um, like green grass, leaves everywhere, they're just pretty leaves, swing. And they also have bird feeders. And my grandpa loved the bird feed feed his birds. And so uh, but he hated squirrels. So he did everything from what I understand he did everything he could to like get the squirrels to stop going in there, but he had to resort to using a BB gun. Um, and my favorite memory of that was a. Uh, he gave Sam a BB gun one time, and Sam took the shooting the squirrels way too literally, went outside, got on the ground, and like was sniping them like he was in Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, I remember Grandpa kind of laughing at that, so I thought that was kind of funny. And lastly on this table is uh, the Bible, and uh, that one represents his faith. He was a very devout Christian. Like He was more than just a church goer that just kind of goes to church casually. He was talking to everybody that he could about Jesus and everything, all that sort of stuff. And so, at his funeral, I, actually, I was looking around, I feel kind of weird talking about it, but I'm going to. Uh, I saw everyone crying, and I was the only one I felt like that was kind of smiling the whole time. I know that sounds kind of weird, but like, I had like a piece about it, because I knew after death where he went. So, I didn't feel a need to cry at all. I felt like I needed to be happy for this. I knew he was hurting for a long time before he passed on, so I kind of wanted him to, I kind of wanted to remember him in kind of a happier way instead of being sad about it. Um, and that's all of that. There's one more paragraph, but I don't remember what I put because it's really smart, so I'm going to read it. Which I'm actually really proud of this paragraph because like, that's pretty smart. I know I'm cheating, but I don't care. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Trish. <laughs> Okay. In conclusion, personal iconography mixed with handmade paper creates a space for personalized reflective nostalgia. 
Even though I have told you exactly what these objects mean, every person here has a different memory associated with each object. This allows you to come up with your own interpretation. This space, is, this space is a meditative space for analyzing isolated moments in time, while the world continues on. It is not, it is not healthy to live in the past, but it is comforting to remember the good times, to light your, to light your present. And that's it. Are there any like, oh, I forgot about this thing, because I was talking. My process is like super like cool, just saying. Uh, what I end up doing is I start off with like a sketch on a piece of paper and then I blow it up to 4x4 four four foot size and then I use hot glue to draw on my base on that board and then I make paper onto it. And if you want to learn how to make paper, I could like tell you later because that's a super long process. Um, anyways, the masonite turns it yellow like what you see on the walls, but uh, the hot glue allows you to see like the lines of all the drawings. And the reason why the lines end up turning darker, at least the way I've been kind of describing it, trying to figure it out, because I don't quite know yet, I'm hypothesizing this, is that when acid evaporates, it rises. And as it rises, it kind of settles at the top of all my lines, and says, like this, since they are the highest point on the paper. And I'm calling this, uh, because no one else is doing it, I'm calling it uh, polymer relief prints, printing. Yeah. I think that's it. That's it. Any questions or anything? What do you think your grandfather would say if you saw this? I don't know. Cool. Sam said, golly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> golly. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's perfect. Uh, from now on, I'm going. I'm going to make it. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to be a little more ambiguous. But I figure for this one, it's kind of appropriate to talk about. It. Since since it's honoring my grandpa, I should go ahead and talk about what everything means, at least for me. Okay, I don't know what comes after this. I'm always just leave after this. 